Good morning. Welcome to Worship in the Word. It's Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Whatever the week has brought your way, I just want you to let go of it. I want you just to let go. Trust God this morning. Just marinate in Him as we worship together. Look at this as a time to be with the Lord, time to be together. And we're standing on holy ground. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here. Where he is, is holy. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here. Where he is, is holy. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence. we start this morning's gathering together, let's dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Let's renew our commitment. Take these words seriously. The use of our hands, the words of our lips, the thoughts in our minds, all that we hold in our heart, let's just dedicate it to the Lord this morning. Amen. He's a holy hands. He's given us holy hands. He works through these hands. So these hands are holy. He's a holy hands. He's given us holy Hands. And he works through these hands, so these hands are holy. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. There's a whole holy lips he speaks through these lips so these lips are holy these are holy lips he's given us holy lips he speaks through I'm 
know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence. standing in his presence on holy ground call out the name of the Lord this morning and say amen we love you Lord we're reaching out to you this morning we're calling on you you're great Lord you're awesome Say it with me now. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. The God of my salvation be exalted. I think you got it now. Let's sing it out. Stand up. Reach out to the Lord this morning. Praise Him. He's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be exalted. Lord liveth, blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be Blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be exalted. I one more time. I'll call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Are you calling upon Him this morning? Are you just reaching out and saying, Lord, I need you. I love you, Lord. I need you. I can't do without you. Said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He is worthy of praise. Amen. I will call upon the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth. Blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord Blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord live it. Blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord live it. Blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be Blessed be the rock. The Lord liveth. Blessed be the rock. The Lord liveth. Blessed be the rock. 
The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock, the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be Morning. We're just going to hang out and worship a little bit this morning. Maybe worship a lot. I think one of these days all we're going to do is just have a big old worship service. Just nothing but getting on our knees, standing up, shouting out, praising God. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind and transform it. Take my will and conform it. Righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what we need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my heart and fold me. Take my will and conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Is that your prayer this morning? To yours, to yours. Take our hearts, our minds, take our thoughts, take our will. Bring us into alignment with you, O oh gracious God. 
Shape us and mold us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who sacrificed his life that we might live forever and forever and forever. Amen. 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 Have your way in us today, O Lord. O Lord, Heavenly Father, hear our prayers this morning. I want to pray for all the churches, Lord, that are still in a kind of a lockdown mode or a shutout mode. I know there's so many concerns, particularly for those that are older. Some of, their con- some of the folks are just confused. They don't know what's going to happen. I pray, God, that no one loses faith in you, but this is an opportunity for us to face this giant. And like David, face it with confidence knowing that you go before us, that you have our backs, that you have us protected, that that all things work to good in your economy for those that love you, and we love you today. You love the Lord this morning? Do you love God? Just reach out to him. Say, God, I love you. I love you, Lord. Have your way in the church. Have your way in the world. Have your way in us, God. Take control of this service. Take control of your word and may it touch our hearts and may it touch our minds in such a way, God, where we leave this gathering here, not the same, but changed, molded more and more and more again in the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Holiness, holiness is what we long for. Holiness is what we need. Isn't that right? Holiness, holiness is what you want from us. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I hope that you're encouraged this morning. I hope that you woke up with a song in your heart before your feet hit the floor that you said, God, I am here with you, and I'm here for you, and you're here for me, and you are the great God of all eternity. Wait to join you in the work that you're already doing. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning. How are you? You can write a little something in there. You can access the link to the Benicia Fellowship Church website. You can make comments. Uh, if, if you want to fuss with me a little bit on something that you hear or, or you hear something that you need to correct or you have questions about, um, just write them in the comments and I'll try to get to them all throughout the week as best I possibly can. But I'm so glad that you're here this morning. Uh, good morning. I just want you to know that I've been thinking about you and praying for you and our, our church and the people that join us and we're gathering new people every week and it's just an awesome opportunity. See, a couple of months ago, we looked at uh, this pandemic and we said uh, to ourselves, wow, this is different, it's confused. Uh, there, there's some mandates that churches can't even uh, worship together in their own facilities. And that's challenging. It's like a big giant coming at you, breathing down your neck. And it can be uh, filled with trepidation. It can be filled with struggles. It can be filled with all kinds of fears. Do you have a giant that is, is looking at you right now that you're facing? Do you have a giant issue, a problem, a struggle? Maybe it's a financial thing. Maybe it's an emotional thing. Maybe it has something to do with relationships. Maybe you're even struggling with your faith right now. My heart just broke yesterday as someone that, that we know um, posted on Facebook of all places that they were disgusted with God, that God had not come through on their plans. And I thought to myself, That's so sad because at the end of the post, they said, we're done with God. And I'm thinking that sounds to me more like a cry for help. It sounds more like like someone in need of a brother or sister or a community to come alongside them and help them through some difficult times. Are you going through some difficult times right now? Is this different for you? Have you faced some challenges recently? Well, this morning, I am going to share with you some thoughts that I have. 
on a very simple story. Uh, it's, it's really almost a child's message, but hey, that, I, I like to craft my messages in such a way where even kids, uh, young kids, can understand them and appreciate them. So I'm not going to try to talk down to you intentionally this morning, but I do want to share some really basic fundamental uh, principles and precepts from the story that we all know that uh, took place uh, four centuries before Christ. And it's all about that battle, that encounter between the young boy David and the giant Goliath. So I'm just going to dig right into this, and uh, I've got some uh, encouraging precepts for you that you can apply to your life, hopefully f today, and that they will live with you for a long, long time. So good morning. God bless you. It's great to be together, and uh, we are looking forward to the day when we can get back together in our facility face-to-face. -face. Look forward to seeing you eyeball to eyeball, and uh, worshiping together in that kind of a proximity. But until that day comes, until that time uh, goes back into a rotation, uh, we're going to continue this, and we're going to continue to reach out, and we're going to actually continue this part of our ministry uh, when, we, when we do get back into the, the building, so to speak. So this morning, though, let's take a look. You know, we've, we've had a lot of scary issues recently, and sometimes the world situation can be so overwhelming, whether it's politics, the economy, whether it's your, your own personal fears, whether it's things that happen to you individually or with your family, corporately, or again, within the world. Sometimes it can just seem to be barreling down and almost overwhelming to the point where you just have to throw your hands up and go, I really don't know what to do here. And you can even start to lose confidence in yourself and what God is doing in and through you. So this morning, I want to uh, just share this little message of the encounter between David and Goliath and leave you with some principles that you can live with here this week and for the rest of your life. So as we look about four centuries before the birth of Christ, we see that uh, there is an army called the Philistines. So the Philistine army and Israel, who Israel at this point is actually ruled by Saul, the king. Now, right there, we could actually take a detour and spend a lot of time because I hope you know, before you start uh, blaming all of the world's problems on somebody, a world leader or uh, somebody that is in authority, before you start doing that, remind yourself that it was never God's ultimate plan for us to have human rulers, all right? Human rulers. God's plan was always that we would be in union and community with him. He would come first and his precepts, his principles, his commandments would be the ones that we would look to to govern and live by. So that's a, a side issue, but here we see that there are battle lines being drawn because Saul is being challenged by the Philistines. So Saul is the, the king of Israel at this point, and he's a tall, good-looking guy. And hey, you know what? There's a good lesson in that. You can't always judge a book by its cover. In fact, you shouldn't really. Uh, what you should do is you should look inside to see what the character's like, to see uh, if that person is weighed in the balance and found worthy. There are leaders that are worthy of following, and then there's leaders that really, they're leaders, they have a following, but they're really not worthy of following, of true leadership. And everything that we're going to be talking about this morning is all about responding to the call of God on your life and living a life of holiness, living a life that is one in relationship with God. And see, when that happens, when you're in a relationship with God, your relationship with people is on a whole new level. Love and respect for God translates into love and respect for one another. So here we have uh, two armies that are fighting. We have the Philistines and we have the Israelites led by Saul, but there's a, a real problem here. 
because they have a standoff in this valley that is uh, south and west of Judah, Jerusalem. And we see that uh, there's, there, there's a, um, a, a real tense situation where uh, everybody seems to be intimidated by each other. So we've got the, the Philistines and we've got the Israelites and they're in this valley and they're at a standoff. So you can see uh, one of the armies on one side of the valley, the other army on the other side, they're camped out. They're taking a great period of time to kind of get charged up and rally the troops and, and they're just getting, you know, all the, the more frenzied and, and yet they just, they don't charge head on to each other. They're, they've got this, this tension between them. So let's take a look and what happens? These, the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered um, in, in this valley of Saul and the men of Israel. Uh, they were all gathered there encamped in the valley of Elah. And Elah, uh, they drew up these battle lines against the Philistines. And what takes place there is that the valley, uh, the Philistines stood on the, on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountains on the other side. And there's a valley between them, Right. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines. So the Philistines, this, this, this individual comes out from this camp, and he's a champion named Goliath. And, uh, and his height was six cubits and a span. He, if you figure that out, he was almost 10 feet tall. I mean, this is a real giant. Nine feet, nine inches tall, approximately. And not only that, but, I mean, this guy was an incredible warrior. He had um, a chain mail on him that weighed 125 pounds. Imagine that. And he had a, a spear and just the tip of his spear, just the tip of his spear was 15 pounds. So we're talking about a massive individual here, powerful. I mean, it just made, to, to look at a person like that with a spear, with this chain mail, and not only that, but he had his own armor bearer. It took one man to go ahead and carry Goliath's armor, his shield. So he had this shield that one man carried before him. So here you have this massive Goliath, and he's got this coat of mail, and it weighs like 5,000 shekels. That's 125 pounds. And he had this bronze armor on his legs, a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders, shaft of his spear was 15 pounds, massive guy. And, and his shield bearer went out before him and he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. This is what he said. This is what he said. Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. And if he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, be a man that we may fight together. So he's choosing them out. He's calling them out. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were, I guess you'd call it quaking in their boots. They were trembling. They were, they were fraidy cats, okay? They were scared, and rightfully so. Now, all right, there's this uh, new character who comes on the scene. His name is David. He was the son of an Ephrathite of uh, Bethlehem in Judah named Jesse. So Jesse was his father, and Jesse had some sons that were actually uh, in the fray. They were in the uh, uh, infantry there uh, it, with, uh, uh, alongside Saul. But David was a runner. He had actually been a young musician, probably about age 12. He was called into Saul's court as a musician. But he, he was young. And he spent his time shepherding. He spent his time watching a flock. And uh, his father, Jesse, said, look, go to the front lines here and bring some food to your brothers. And see, this, 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 this had been taking place now, this choosing out, if you will, this coming out each day and defying the armies of Israel, the army of Israel. 
uh, with this boasting and with this challenge uh, for a period of, of like 40 days. In fact, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, that's where you're going to find this story. And um, it says that David was the, was the youngest of uh, Jesse's sons. And the three eldest uh, were the ones that were following Saul. And David went back and forth uh, from Saul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem and uh, out to the lines to bring food to his family, that kind of thing. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. So in the morning, Goliath would come out, he'd make his challenge. In the evening, he would come out and make his challenge. Now, we're going to take a little pause here because I, I, I want to ask you something. I want you to think this morning about your giant. What's your giant? Does it come out in the morning? Does it come out in the evening? Does your giant challenge you from far across the valley? Does this giant speak to you in words that, that just melt your heart and make you afraid? Does your giant bring fear into the focus of your daily life? You know, it's so easy when you wake up in the morning to have thoughts of trepidation because you're entering into a new day. And most people enter into these days without much preparation. So they, they go to bed with maybe too much news on their mind or they go to bed with fear and trepidation. They go to bed with all the things that make them tremble and they go and they sleep on these things. That's why it's so good to prepare your heart the night before. You know, in the business world, they always tell you, look, be prepared for the following day, the day before. So reflect, write out your schedule, be prepared, have everything ready, know what you're going to do that day, and then it makes it a lot easier to just walk right in and go through your list because you're prepared. See, God does that for us when we take time at the end of, of our days, and unfortunately in our Western world, the, the end of the day might come a little bit too late. So you've heard the uh, uh, expression, and this is uh, one that comes from uh, running horses, you know, run hard and put to bed wet. So you're running and you're sweating and you're, you're working hard and you just collapse into a bed rather than taking time and backing off and going, I need some reflection here. Maybe it's a time uh, talking with your, with your spouse or your kids or a uh, time with God or all of the above and taking time to move into your sleep time in the resting arms of God who keeps you and sustains you so that when you do wake up, you're ready to plant your feet on the floor and just know that as you move forward into this brand new day, that it's with confidence that you have in Christ. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So um, here we find this battleground and there's a standoff, okay? And David is a runner. He's a young kid. He's a, uh, a teenager, probably 17, 18 years old. And um, most people would consider him just a, a ready kid. You know, Scripture says that he's handsome, he's ready, he's young, um, and he's uh, been trained to guard sheep. Now, you might think, oh, well, that's kind of an easy gig. That's because you see people tending sheep wherever you are with fences around them and that kind of thing, and they're, they're somewhat protected. Maybe they have a, a, a rifle or something like that. Well, we're talking about a time and a place where protecting sheep was out in the open, and they were um, uh, very vulnerable to wolves, even lions. So you have the, the predators that David had to uh, keep the sheep safe from. And he became really good uh, with a sling. See, now, we're talking military terms here. It's important to understand that in ancient military, basically you had cavalry. Those are guys with the chariots and the horses. And you had infantry. And those are mostly the ones you see in the, the movies where they're there and they've got the, the bows and the arrows and they're marching and that kind of thing. But you also had, and you don't hear this much, you had slingers. Now, what is a slinger? David was a slinger, all right? Um, not a gunslinger, but a rock slinger. So he was well 
trained. Now remember now, he's out there watching these sheep out in the openness and the open air, out in the uh, uh, wild area with predators, and he had to fend those off. So I would imagine that David had a lot of opportunity to train and to learn how to hit the mark with his sling. Think about that. In, in fact, when you read ancient history, it talks about slingers being able to uh, sling a stone and to actually hit a hair on your head. See, these guys were accurate. Um, you know, it's, it's like football players. They hold the ball and they, they pass it off. They turn it. They look in front of a mirror. They want to make sure that they're passing. What about a baseball player? Baseball player is swinging the bat, swinging the bat, making sure a thousand times, 10,000 times, 500,000 times, a million times at bat. See, the more you're at bat, the more opportunity that you have to strike out, but the more opportunities you have to hit a home run. See, David's out here and he is practicing hitting the mark. So, David comes onto the scene. He has, uh, uh, he, his world hasn't been rocked by all this fear, so to speak, that's taking place between the standoff between the Philistines and Israel. And, um, and, and here he comes in and he's going to bring food to his brothers and he comes on this crazy scene. His dad tells him, take the food to your brothers. He comes on the scene and he sees uh, his people quaking. So it says in, in uh, 1 Samuel 17 uh, that Saul and, and all the men of Israel were in the Valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So they still had skirmishes going on, all right? But this idea of uh, one submitting wholly to another was that challenge from Goliath. Take me one-on-one. -on -one. If, you, if, you, if you kill me, we're your servants. If, uh, if I kill you, you're all part of our kingdom as well. So David says, rose early and left the sheep with a keeper and took the provisions and went. And his dad had commanded him to do this and he was faithful to that. So he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line shouting the war cry. We're talking about the host. We're talking about the armor bearer. We're talking about Goliath himself and, and making this challenge. David uh, uh, left all these things in charge with his, with his uh, keeper of the, of the sheep. And anyway, he, he dropped all his, his baggage and he, he goes up and he's hearing all what's going on here in this, in this fray. And it's really starting to shake him up. So he's asking, what's going on here? And they tell him, they say, we're getting challenged here and we are all too afraid. There is nobody here that wants to fight Goliath. There, there's nobody that wants to. So we're having these little skirmishes and he comes out in the morning, in the evening, and he's just, he's just really shaking us up. We don't know what to do. So it says, all the men of Israel, when they saw this man, they fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. David said to these guys, he says, they were the ones who were standing around him telling him the story, what shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine? Now, wait a minute. That's interesting. Think about that. Um, David's not a perfect person. Um, even as a young man, even a, as a teenager, he's asking this question, hey, what is the king going to do for the person who kills this guy and uh, takes away this reproach from Israel? Well, for who is the uncircumcised Philistine, he says, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, think about that. David, even in his imperfection, maybe his desire for a, a, to better his life, um, lots of things I'm sure were running through his head, but he says, who is this guy to defy the armies of the living God? So David had faith in God and the people answered him in the same way. So shall it be done to the man who kills him that Saul will exalt him and he will actually give him his daughter in, in marriage and he will make him rich 
and elevate him in his uh, authority and his kingdom. So see, now the brothers of David, they heard this, and, and uh, Eliab, the eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. They were jealous, and he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evil in your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. This is his brother talking to him. And David said, what have I done now? What have I done? What have I done now? What, what, was it not but a word? And he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way. And the people answered him again as before. So David was asking, what's going on? What's happening? What, what, what is it that the king needs? What will the king do for the one who kills this, this giant? So when the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul and he sent for him. So Saul sent for David and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Now, wait a minute. All right, so here's this kid. He's coming out of nowhere. Saul doesn't really recognize him because he's been in his court probably since he was about 12 years old for a couple of years. But there's been some time goes by. I mean, people change from the time they're 12 to 17, 18. Paul doesn't, Saul doesn't really uh, recognize him. And he says, wait a minute, who is this kid? Saul said to David, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight him for you're but a youth and he's been a man of war from his youth. So Saul here is judging the book by its cover. Isn't that interesting? But David said to Saul, listen what he says, without any hesitation, your servant used to keep sheep for his father and when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. Now imagine how that didn't happen overnight, folks. This is a, a young man in training, protecting the sheep. And David goes on and says, and if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. So he, he was a fighter. He didn't give up. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, all right. Go, and the Lord be with you. See, David approached this thing not from a place of fear. I'm sure that he had weighed in the balance what he was able to do. And, and by the way, he did have a strategy. We're going to talk about that in, in just a minute. What, what was David's strategy? I mean, he's just this kid. And what does Paul try to do? Paul, Saul tried to clothe David with his armor. He tried to put on this helmet and this bronze uh, uh, helmet on his head and, and put his coat of mail on him and David strapped uh, and, 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 and David was strapped with Saul's sword and you know he tried in vain to make this happen but David just said I can't do this this, 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 I'm, this is not what I have learned this isn't my strategy I'm not like Goliath I don't need the, the mail that isn't how I roll I don't need the, the chain of mail. I don't need the helmet. I don't need all this extra stuff. I don't need a shield and a, and a, a shield bearer and all these things. So he says, I, I, I can't go with these for I have not tested them. I've not tested them. See, David had been out in the wilderness testing his aim. Testing to see if he could hit the target. Testing over and over and over again. And he became good and he became confident at what his skills could do. So he says, uh, I can't go with these for I've not tested them. So David put them all off. He took off what Saul had, had encumbered him with. See, a lot of times people, when they look at you and and they say, well, you know, let me encumber you with my stuff. Maybe you'll do better. Well, Saul wasn't even stepping up to the plate. He was king here, and 
the king is the one who actually probably should have stepped up to fight Goliath, but Saul knew he was not a match, that he was not prepared, that he had not tested in this category. So David put these things off, and he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones, uh, from the, uh, he went over to the brook, he took these five stones and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. You know, one of the things, one of the lessons we could learn here is that you got to rise up and be bigger than your fears. You, you got to look at those fears and ask yourself some really important questions. I'm not saying that there's things that we shouldn't be afraid of, but but rise up. David did not live in his head. He knew that he had tested well and that he could do this thing. And he didn't hesitate. He rose above the fears. In other words, he was bigger than the fears that were coming at him. Hey, the next time that you start getting um, into, let's, let's call it the, 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 the vision of the giant, okay? So the giant's looking at you. And the giant is scary. The giant's big and he's got all this stuff going. And it's to intimidate you and start to make you feel very small. See, if you live in your head with that too long, you'll shrink away just like the armies of Israel. You won't step up. You'll be afraid. You'll let your fears get the better of you. But I want to tell you, God says that in Christ, you can do all things. I can do all things in and through Christ who strengthens me. Actually, it's Christ can do all things in and through me. All right, he's the one who strengthens us. Remember, uh, David's uh, mantra here was the, 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 the God of Israel the God Almighty, the Lord Almighty. He was fighting with the confidence of God. So the next time that fear comes and shows up in the form of some kind of giant in your life, don't live in your head. Take some action. Whatever those stones are, whatever it is that, that you need in your pouch, whatever you've trained well for, whatever you're preparing and what, however well you're prepared, take that and know that you are bigger than your fears. You're bigger than your fears. I, I'm going to be very vulnerable here with you guys here this morning, and I'll share with you. There probably isn't a morning that I don't wake up. And the first thing that I notice in my head is a bunch of little voices. And they're from all over the place. You know, because we've got uh, all kinds of stuff going on in our world right now. We've got lots of responsibilities that we have to be very solid in our, in our prayerful decision making as we go. And every morning I wake up and go, whoa, where, where are you from? What, what voice are, are, are you trying to, you're trying to get something, you're trying to get in my head. You're trying to wear me down. You're, you're, like, a, you're like a giant, but, but you get this little voice and you're, you want to get the better of me. You know what, this is what I do. I recognize it right up front. And I go, wow, <laughs> there is a lot of scary stuff going on. There is a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of things that I have to do. But if I live and meditate on all of the negative, all of that stuff, all of the scary stuff, that's where I'm going to function. And that is not the place that I want to be. So I consciously say, man, I'm bigger than my fears. Satan... <laughs> Get thee behind me because you are the one who is coming at me with the voice of fear. And I choose God. I say, God, I can do all things through you who strengthens me. Can we spend some time together? Can you teach me today? Even though I have some plans, I know that you're the one in control. I know you're the one who has the day all laid out. There's nothing that happens that you don't know about. Can I please, please, join you in the work that you're already doing. And God comes in and says, yeah, I'm right here. I'm not going to leave you. See, he gives us choices about how we respond to the things that come our way. So here we go. David, he puts off this stuff that Saul is trying to put on him, the armor and all that. 
and he takes uh, his own sling, his staff, and chooses five stones and um, puts them in, in, in the pouch and he approaches Goliath. Now, can you imagine that scene? Here's a, almost a 10 foot tall giant with his own shield bearer and this whole army behind him. I can imagine that they are just cracking up. They, they must have thought that the whole army had just lost their minds to send this kid out who didn't have any armor. He was, and, and he was very small. I mean, compared to a giant, he was like a gnat. And yet he was going to face Goliath, the Philistine. So it says that the Philistines moved forward and came near to David. He still didn't back down. With his shield bearer in front of him, and when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. So Goliath is looking at him saying, what are you doing, sending a kid out against me? You cowards. And he started, you know, just, just putting it out there. It was, it was an evil debate. And he was disdained, disdaining him. And he, because he was a youth, he was ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And so Goliath cursed David by his gods. Now think about that. Goliath cursed David by his gods. We already know from many other passages, uh, just take the book of Daniel, that we know that God can deliver us, okay? It's, there's no guarantee that he will, but we're gonna, we've already made the decision. We're not gonna back down. We're gonna serve him even if he doesn't deliver us. Now we don't have that, that same approach here. David has a, a whole uh, new vibrance in his confidence as he approaches Goliath. Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And, and Goliath cursed him by his gods. And Goliath says to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Now, that's pretty scary. You got a 10 foot giant. He's knocking on your door. He's barreling down on you. And he's saying, I'm going to tear you to pieces. You, you, you little boy, you come to me like, a, like I'm a dog with, with, a, with a stick in your hand. I am going to do you in. And I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. I would imagine that there's a little pause in this. Because David responds. We never see that there's a shouting match. We never see that, that he is riled up and, and, and crazed. But we see that, that David says to Goliath, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. Listen to this. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. See, so he's, David is saying, I, I come to you, all right, with a power that you don't even know about. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And I come to you, even though you've cursed me by your gods, you have actually defied the people of God. You've defied them. Wow. He goes on and says, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Hey, that's, I, I, I'll tell you what, I, I sure hope that the, the Israelite army was applauding. I hope each and every one of them heard this from this, this young boy, David, as he comes back to Goliath and he tells them, this day you will be mine. This day you will be mine. Oh man. Oh man. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I'll strike you down and cut off your head. I'll give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that 
all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. So we see what unfolds right then and there. I'm sure there's another pause or, 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 or maybe Goliath just has had enough and he, he, he's ready to go after him. But it says, when the Philistines arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. She had all this armor. He had a shield bearer, 15 pound tip on his sword, 125 pounds of, of, of male armor. He had a helmet on his head and yet there was a spot of vulnerability and David knew where it was. David saw his opportunity and his strategy was to hit that spot. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and he killed him. There's no sword in the hand of David, none whatsoever. David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. So David knocked him out, knocked him unconscious long enough to take that sword out of the sheath and to cut off the Philistine's head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. They ran away. They were the Frady cats at this point. They were the ones who scampered off probably as fast as they possibly could. This was a, an act and the power of God right before them unfolding. The men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and they pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way and as far as the eye could see, they, they, they began to uh, do harm to this army. The people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines. They plundered their camp. Okay? And, and we see here that David took the head of Goliath. He actually took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. So we see that David dragged all of it, took that head of Goliath to Jerusalem. As soon as Saul saw David go out against the Philistines, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth. It wasn't that Saul didn't know him, but he didn't recognize him. And it wasn't so much that he was asking, hey, who is this guy? He kind of knew him, but he didn't really recognize him. He was a musician in his court from the time he was 12, a couple of years gone by. Now he's out. He just killed the Philistine, killed Goliath. And when he's asking this question, whose son is this youth? What he's saying is, what family did this young man come from? I, I want to know his lineage. I want to know his family. Who is his father? And Abner said, as your soul lives, O king, I don't know. And the king said, inquire whose son this boy is. And as soon as David returned from the striking down of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Now, I want to share with you a couple of things that, that, you can, that you can apply here. Very practical applications. What are some lessons that you've learned from this? You see this story. You've heard it a hundred times. You know it. But how do you apply it? How do you apply it? Number one, you are bigger than your fears. Your fears are, are small compared to what God can do. And you know what? Size doesn't really matter. Small doesn't really matter. You've heard the expression, good things come in small packages. 
I mean, they really do. I mean, what would you rather have, you know, a, 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 a 10 karat diamond ring, a real one, <laughs> not just a zir, zirconium one, but a real one, or, or like a 500 pound uh, workout machine? You know, how many workout machines could you buy with a 10 karat diamond ring? Oh, anyway, but good things do come in small packages. But small doesn't matter. David shows that to us right here. Maybe you're thinking, hey, you know what? I'm small. I don't really matter. I'm insignificant. I don't really have a voice. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And when you look to God for your marching orders, when you look to the Lord and ask him sincerely, God, how is it that you can use me? What is it that you have for me today? He will give you an empowerment that you, uh, you, you could never even muster up. He will supply you beyond your means, okay? But here's a third principle, and you, and you need to listen to this. You have to learn how to use what you have. Take what you have and start right here. Maybe, maybe you've lost and picked yourself up and lost and picked yourself up. Maybe you struggled, but then thought about, ah, maybe I shouldn't pick myself up. No, you should. You need to pick yourself up. Pick yourself up and use what you have. Test it out, just like David. Practice. Use what you have to glorify God. Use what you have to make your family all that you pray that it could be. Use what you have to add value in this lost and dying world. Use what you have and God will supplement it. He will augment it. And when the timing comes, he will supply you and his supply will be sufficient. Use what you have and start right where you are. Another principle is you got to just believe that things are possible with God. See, if you're relying on yourself, or if, you're, or if your standard of possibilities is one where you say, well, you know, I can't really do this, or so-and-so can't do that, or this and that. The other thing, all things are possible with God to those who believe and love him. Do you love the Lord? Do you love God? Are you going to trust him? Are you going to let the giants of this world come and eat you up? You know, I, I don't want to get gruesome and all that sort of thing, but I'm going to encourage you. <laughs> Stand firm. Cut off the head of the giant and hold it high. Whatever that giant head is, cut it off and hold it high. But that's after you've made a decision, you got out of your head, and you take some action, and you realize God is, it will empower me. He will give me the tools. He'll give me everything I need, but I got to apply myself and I got to use what I have. Another precept here is do not underestimate yourself. See, the, the world wants to beat you down. The world wants to tell you with these little whisperings, whether it's in the morning, noontime, afternoon, whatever, whether it's through people or just the voice in your head. Okay, the world wants to beat you down and it definitely wants you to underestimate yourself. Just like Goliath, when he said, hey, you're just a kid. You come at me with sticks like I'm a dog. See, he's, he, he wanted David to underestimate himself, to second guess himself. But David already had his mind trained. He already had his skill set in order. He used what he had, and he had a plan. What's your plan? What's your plan for facing the giant today? What is your plan for taking some action on whatever it is? That I have a challenge for you here today, all right? You can private message me. You, you, you can make it uh, public on these, these posts here on our Facebook Live, whatever you want to do, but... Number one, if you're, if you're going to stand up today and say, I don't have a, a giant, the truth is you're going to lie about a whole bunch of other stuff too. Because every one of us face giants every day. Some of us sooner, some of us later, some of us 
Um, the, the giants are maybe bigger or more serious, but each and every person has a giant. What is your giant and what are you going to do? I'd love to hear about it because I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to come alongside you. I want to intercede for you. I want to lift you up and I want to give God thanks for you taking a decision today for God is the one who gets the glory. And that's what it's all about. Because let me, let me give you one closing precept here. And that is that David actually points to Jesus. See, the things of the Old Testament uh, give us direction and point to Christ. And we see that David was a shepherd. We see that David was a protector. That David was a deliverer. Doesn't that sound like Jesus? Doesn't that sound like Christ? Doesn't that sound like the Lord? David points to Christ. And see, so you're thinking, well, hey, Mike, this message is just, it's all about, it's all about me and overcoming and being successful and, and cutting off the head of, of my giant and holding it up and going, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the reason that this was so powerful in this story is that God showed up, he gets the glory, David gave him that glory, and the story doesn't end here. I want to encourage you, get into your Bible, read it. Spend some time with the Lord. Spend some time in prayer. But I want to pray for us this morning uh, in all sincerity that, that God would show up and deliver us throughout this week so that you and I can be a people who don't just overcome for our own good, but actually slay the giant to the glory of God. See, God is, is powerful. God is is really desiring right now to uh, find the hearts and the minds of, of his people who call out to him, who cry out to him, and who trust him. So God bless you. Um, there's so much more to this story. I, I pray that maybe you just read it. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, go through it and just ask yourself, how does this apply to me, Lord? But as you read through it, call out to him, say, God, I'm open. I need you. I'm calling out to you. I'm calling out to your name. My family needs you. I need you. I'm facing some giants right now, and I am going to trust you, God, that you are bigger than all my fears, and you'll come and you'll prove that out in my life, that you'll show me that, that my size and what I don't have doesn't matter, that you've given me tools, resources, and abilities, and if I just use what I have, It'll be to your glory, and there'll be victory. I'm going to believe in the possibilities, Lord, and I'm not going to underestimate myself because I'm not going to underestimate you. You are active in my life. You are working in and through me, and I'm trusting you, God. And just like David, we desire, I desire, to point others to Christ by my actions, by my deeds, by the works of my hands, by the words of my mouth. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be pretty. Uh, there are no perfect people. We're not perfect. David's not perfect. But we know the perfect one. We know the perfect one. Trust him today. Trust God today. The Bible says that God loves the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. Scripture also says that when we believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead and profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we shall be saved. Everyone has sinned. We've all had news. The wages of sin is death. But the good news is that even while we were in our sin, God sent his son to intercede for us. And we will have we actually have life everlasting life eternal in christ i'm going to take this moment and ask you if you've not made a decision to invite jesus into your life into your heart to to be your all in all to be your lord to be your savior that you do that today here's a, a little prayer that we can pray i don't want to sound like a tv preacher but but this is important the best decision that you'll ever make and I want to lead you into this morning. If you have not 
prayed this a prayer like this or reached out to God or maybe this is a new experience for you and uh, you say how how do I become a Christian well this is this is a good entree this this will bring 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 you and and God up close and personal so pray this prayer with me Lord I just want to ask you to forgive my sin I ask you to come and to teach me of you uh, I, I turn from my sin Lord and I believe that you did rise from the grave. And I profess you as my Lord and Savior and ask that you would save me in Jesus' name. If you're here this morning and you're just saying, you know, my faith has been weak. My, I, 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 haven't, I haven't had a David faith and you want that. Let's pray together. Lord, uh, I wanna just reach out to you this morning and ask that you strengthen our faith. God, that you uh, give us uh, your Holy Spirit power to be overcomers, to be victorious over the giants in our lives. And, and I ask you to for, forgive me right now for allowing that fear, displaced as it is, to come in and to oftentimes set me back or keep me from stepping into all the possibilities that you have for me. So for those that are here today who might be facing the challenges of of life, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, whatever those are, God, show up and make a way. In Jesus' name, amen. May the love of God and the hope of Jesus Christ and the victory of the Holy Spirit be ours now and forevermore. Let's go out singing. I pray that this song is in your heart all week. the Lord He is worthy to be praised So shall I be saved from my enemies I will call upon the Lord Let's sing it again I will call upon the Lord I will call upon the Lord He is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation is all dead. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock that the God of my salvation be exalted. He is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. That the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. That the God of my salvation be exalted. Hallelujah! Blessed be the rock, the God of my 
my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock, that the God of my salvation be bless you guys. I hope you have an awesome day, an awesome week. I'm just going to probably sit here and play some more music. Lord, live there, blessed be the rock, that the God of my salvation be his all Lord, live there, blessed be the rock, that the God of my salvation be his Lord, will you call upon him this week? I will call upon the Lord. Amen. I will call upon the Lord. 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 Will call upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, it's good to be together. God bless you guys. I so look forward to seeing you soon in person. Um, have an awesome day. Love you all.